Nice. Say something, honey. Sing like opera. Ah. <laughs> Good. Hey, Jim, do you remember the time that Heidi brought in a tequila for me and I got a little <laughs> sloppy voice after? Do I look all right without my hat? That's the question. Yeah, you just have a little wispy hair. That's it. Yeah, yeah. So if I take them off, is that better? Which is well, better, this? Face. That or that? You, I mean. That you. or that? Off. Off. Now let's see. Let me see. Oh, nice face. <laughs> yeah, I use my French press for the chai. We push chai through. Then we like our chai dirty. Dirt, you know what a dirty chai is, Jim? And we like it really dirty, heavy <laughs> caffeine. Dirty heavy as possible. Espresso. We say dirty as possible. Mm -hmm. They say in the coffee store. Oh, no. We go to. Dirty chai is a shot of espresso in with chai. So I don't know how that makes it dirty. Maybe the espresso is dirty, but they call it a dirty chai. And, Jim, do you know that when you go to the barista in the coffee, like a Starbucks, you say long pull? I think long pull is some obscenity. A long pull. I want a long pull. Don't be so short in your pull. Now Let's let's see. Drink. It's nine fifty nine. Right. We're almost ready here. Yeah, dum -da -dum -da. Look at Jim. He knows how to do emojis. Oh yeah. He's... I don't even know how to read them. So a lot of times I don't like something or well, not like it because I don't know what the little thing is. It's like brown little thing. Yeah. I have how to many eggplants you get? Babe? What's an eggplant mean? I think it, I think it means penis. Something. I don't know. I don't. I don't get anything myself. Is that what it means? I think so. But how do I know? Uh, yeah, our kids are great, but we try to give them. Our older one is um, is an adult. Yeah, but he's a young adult, and he fucks up on money All because the time. he doesn't get it, and we're making it hard on him right now. So he lives at a different economic class than when he was. A, teen, a younger yeah, teenager. Yeah, for sure. A younger one is Mr. Good-looking, and he doesn't know what to do with it, and Heidi is working real hard so that he doesn't get to think he's hot shit because he's so handsome. You know, he's the kind of person women pay attention to, and that ain't good, is it? Also, it's always good to have two kids because then you can't take credit or think anything's your fault. They're so different that you realize it has nothing to do with you. It's them. <laughs> Because our other kid saves all his money. He doesn't spend anything. Kids got to learn to stay humble. Mm. Yeah, I agree. I mean, Heidi and I came from the lower working class. Yeah. We're going to, for her, going to the CVS kind of drugstore and buying something was a thrill. Or the bookstore. Right. Yeah, the bookstore. The bookstore. Go I'm buying a book without thinking about the cost. Me, I um, was I didn't like poverty. I was determined to make money. Drum roll. Okay, I should start. You mean? Okay, members. Here's what I need. I proposed Heidi and me because I'm trying new things. So I proposed a, a live stream with Heidi and me talking about things we don't know what yet without your suggestion. You know this test with the four letters, A, B, C, D, L, M, G, D, Luce? Somebody will know the name of this test. Briggs Stratton or Briggs something or other. Thank you so oh, much. Oh, Neil Lucy. gave it to us. Yeah, he, the husband of Living Fierce, gave us this test. This and of the 75 letters you could possibly be, mm -hmm. we came out to the same letter. Yeah. So the idea of marrying somebody who is your opposite or being with somebody who is your opposite doesn't apply in our case. Yeah, it didn't work for us. Anyway, we, we'd married other people, so we lived and learned also. We had marriages before our career. Right, many. Enough, enough to learn. We had enough marriages to learn. <laughs> I really didn't learn. That's really true, Heidi. I didn't learn. I just knew that you would be the right person mm. for me if you liked me. I knew you liked me. As a friend. As, yeah, as a friend. We were friends yeah. for a long time before any Michigas developed. We were friends. And that friendship 
locked us to each other because we know each other as friends before lovers. Oh, I hate that word out loud. That's meant to be like private. My I wife, mean, how else did you have kids? I get that part, but still. <laughs> it's gotta be some propriety from you. Okay, some. I think the most important thing for us to talk about, this is my feeling, is relationship. Because we're really good at it. And as I mentioned uh, in a comment, when we go to like the diner and we sit and eat, the guy behind, the family behind us sitting at the next table, people stop and they listen to Or about us. working together. We're very good at that. I mean, not many couples work together for, you know, good reason. She's, well, she's funny. Yeah, I think some of the other things too are like aging. That is a hard one. People <laughs> don't really, oh, yeah, I'll see how that went. Um, <laughs> I still think it's a good topic. But it is a really good topic. I paid, I made a bad post a couple of days ago, video. Uh, you did. With, yeah, the, I, I, quit, I compared in some way that I asked the question, as some of you may know, George Wallace to oh, Donald Trump. boy. And it pissed off a lot of people who felt I was saying Trump that is. Donald Trump yeah. Yeah. is so George Wallace. 32 yeah. people unsubscribed, pointing out to me that they They had. don't even want to answer the question. They don't want to know. They don't want the comparison. I was not comparing. I was asking. Well, they want true believers. Because I'm fascinated by, to what extent are you guys the children of the people who came before you in terms of values? In some cases, people are, well, in every case, people's family affected them. Heidi, is, she, she said to me early on when I was seven, eight years old, maybe five or six, I learned that whatever my father did, I'm going to do the opposite. <laughs> it's really good advice in her case. We all read into what we feel, what we already think. So I sometimes forget what other people think, and I just put out my thing, and then other people think that I've said all kinds of things that I didn't say. No, but it is true. Some people on your channel are looking for an opinion. If you don't share their opinion, they're off. Yeah, that's sad to me. Yeah. I was proud to have... I am proud to have the variety of opinions that are on the channel. Mm -hmm. I'm proud of that, that I've managed to hold them together because I really, like everybody else, I believe there's one America. So the fact that they, this one got them. Some, many people, I, I commented on this, Jim, you may notice, didn't actually ever see the video, which is really good. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just they immediately off the title. The just title. Into spin Boom. Mode. Yeah, my most popular video right now, I don't know how many of you have seen it, but let me know, is um, the uh, Vietnam vet turned police cop in New in San Francisco. San Francisco, yeah. I, 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 I edited that. Loved it right when I heard it. She's my sometimes editor. She has I'm to, working on two right now, two black women from the South who grew up uh, and went, were in school during Brown versus Board of Education and what it was like for them. It's not, they didn't love it and they didn't know about uh, racism until, because uh, they had very um, black communities and, and rich. It had everything Church they needed, it had everything they wanted, it had all the joys, all the community. And then they were forced to integrate and they never saw such hatred. Uh, they had no idea. She picks what she it. likes. And why is she a good editor? Why is anybody a good editor? Because she figures out the story. Everything is about the story. Even if you're just presenting ideas, they come, they come together so people watch. We work hard at that. Our chickens are happy clams. Our chickens sit in the front yard on our porch, destroying our porch with oh, poop. pooping all over the place. But no one ever tries to break in because have to first step in shit. I think that's a deterrent. I think that's called a deterrent. Yeah. It's pretty disgusting to be a chicken. They're just talking to you. And as she's talking, it comes out the other hole. Oh, yeah. yeah, they can't help it. Yeah. We don't have enough sunlight yet for eggs. We're, I think we're probably, we need about one more hour of sunlight look what, look before the Lucy chickens is. start going. Wow. Oh, noisy foxes. Yeah, you know, I hear in the morning coyote. Um... And those coyote babies, I think they're learning how to eat, and that's why they're so noisy. A lot of yipping, a lot of, uh, yeah. you hear the foxes, I hear the coyotes. We used to live in Oh, you think it's mating season. See, I think they're learning how to eat. I think mommy is teaching them, and they're getting all yippy excited about it. That's what I think. 
We have coyote in our our neighborhood here. You probably do also. Very confident. Run along the fence line. When they see you driving by in a car, they hop over the fence. Very confident. We can't leave our chickens out. We've lost several chickens to animals, and we don't do that. They're in They're in a walled in Fort place. Knox. They're now in Fort Knox. But that Fort Knox was built based on trial and error. <laughs> but now it's completely safe. But there were a few times we didn't know certain things could happen, and then we found out they could. But now it's Fort Knox. Now everybody's safe. Yeah, the coyotes are fascinating to me. We used to live in a rural area, and Heidi had our first child as a little baby, and she would roll the baby out to the end of our very long driveway. And what the coyotes would do is track her. Yeah, gather, begin to gather. Gather. And Just she, in case, I was going to look away for a moment, which never happened. Mm-hmm. Our tortoise escaped months once, ago. Once, once. We've got, we've got our fences nailed now. Also now Fort Knox. He was after a flower. Just the back parking lot, I had all kinds of stuff, including, you know, a place he hadn't been. That's enough. And we lost our tortoise. We were freaked. We were driving the neighborhood, driving we around. Sickened. And we went in the backyard, and another neighbor came out and said, hey, are you looking for a tortoise? Because uh, we have a tortoise. I think it's yours. So Heidi went and got the tortoise, and the tortoise clearly showed by his emotions. Oh, we love each other. Anyway, he opened up. He came out of his shell. He was all over me. She goes, I was going to ask for proof, but I think it belongs to you. I can't see a happier animal. (laughs) Truth. Sweet. Yeah. Oh, at least Lucy also has coyote skunks. Oh, we passed about four skunks this morning, and we weren't sure if it was pot or skunk either. Although, sometimes when it burns the nose like that, it's a definite skunk. I have a video of a skunk shooting. You probably have seen Oh, you it. mean out the butt? Yeah. Or it's whatever. Not the butt. It's the uh, scent hole. <laughs> <laughs> it's very effective. You get hit with it. It doesn't wash off you if you're a dog. Out the scent hole. Good pot smells. Oh, it smells the same. Burns the nose a little. Yeah, that's true. If it's fresh, the old stuff, you can really tell the difference. I don't think they have any pot in Ohio. If they do, that's a different Ohio than I knew back in the old days. Is it Ohio? Don't they have it legally? Yeah, I'm sure they do. But but Ohio is a strange place. Oh, you know, this morning I'm just having a little green tea because... um, Why? Well, I wasn't really sure how much we'd be talking, and I wasn't sure if we'd need to, like, <clears throat> you know, get it down. She is not a willing participant. Not particularly, but... She uh, does not like... No, not particularly. Heidi does not like being noticed, yet she's noticed all the time. Mm. So she's used to being noticed, but doesn't like it. Do I, I like my members' community. Will I like a public live stream, Jim? I don't know. First of all, I don't even know if anybody will come. I don't know how many public people who are not members. It's amazing. Oh, yeah, and move over to Patreon. One Patreon to the next Patreon. That's complicated. It was but. amazing to me. I think I told you how many people wrote that $5 is hard for them. That yeah. gets me. Yeah. I don't like it that the middle class, quote, unquote, in America is It's real. Struggling. It's tough. Making money, says Lisa, is tricky. Online. It's true. I have always found a way. Yeah. I think Heidi, one of the reasons she liked me up front. Is admired. I, one of the reasons she admired me, thank you, up front, is that I always seem to find a pocket where I could survive outside the system. Yeah. I, I've never worked inside the system, inside a big company. I did no. work in startups when I first came to California. But I, still, that was individual. You were never under someone else's. Yeah. Yeah. I was telling Heidi this morning at breakfast that I I used to work for AT&T. For 15 years, I was a communications expert, really, to AT&T. That's how I got to California. And uh, I asked the big, big boss, who's like senior vice president of a giant corporation, hey, how come you hire me? I was sitting in a car riding. How do you hire me? I mean, there's other guys as good as me, I said. So how am I getting hired? Why? And he said, because we like you. That'll do it. It was a surprise to me. Ah, I wonder what it is they like. You were right most of the time. I think that's what they liked about you. You were Uh, right. Your crazy ideas actually worked. Yeah. I mean, I deal these days primarily 
with two things, my own anxiety, which is way down, but present. It's a chittering in my voice, my head, which I can't shut down. And um, aging, which I'm not going to talk about. Yeah. Really? You're not going to talk about it? That's unusual. I, I think I do too much. So David and I started, um, when COVID started, we went through drive, this place with drive through coffee in our town. Uh, before that, what did we do? We made our own. Before that, I think we made our own. But COVID shut us down so much that we were looking for little ways that we could go out without putting ourselves in danger or others and drive through coffee. Also, they were up early and we love watching the sun come up and we you made see how she doesn't, friends. See how she doesn't say I'm an op. I interrupted her, which I don't usually do because she'll pin me to the wall. But you see, she does not say I'm an op. No. How the hell? And she grew up Rhode Island accent, all gone. Heavy. Well, it can come back. It can come back. If we have a... A live stream with tequila, it'll be Rhode Island ease <laughs> all over the place. We'll have to do that. We'll have to promise that. Yeah. We made bird friends of two varieties, both seagulls and pigeons. They loved us and we loved them. Yeah. Uh, and it just became our habit of every time, every morning. But you've always been habitual doing. about when you go out, you like to go to the same place to eat. When I met Heidi and we were it's dating true. in I like the Bethesda, same Maryland. I would travel across the country every two weeks. We found that at three weeks, when we talked it was on the a phone, disaster. we fought with each oh, other. Oh boy, did we fight after three weeks! Of not work. seeing each other face to face, yeah, just face -to -face. talking. It was we couldn't do it. So I would. We go, could do it at two weeks. We could still get along, <laughs> find things in, of interest. <laughs> three weeks, we were jumping at each other. Yeah, we needed more at that point. We needed a memory. I got a whole Lakers. garage filled with shit, and you know, I started to. Raffle stuff. off my stuff. stuff, not shit. Well, you bet. I used to call it shit, but then I realized <laughs> it's all saleable. That makes it stuff. <laughs> collectibles makes it collectibles. Yeah, all the stuff on the back wall. That's all. That's all collectible things. They really are. Every one of them I picked over years. Picking stuff. Picking stuff. I'm still doing it a little bit on eBay. A little bit, yeah. I know what I'm doing because I've seen millions of things because I started collecting when I was five. No kidding. Okay, how was Cabo? All yeah, right, I'll tell you. <laughs> the water was beautiful. The Sea of Cortez, which shouldn't be called Sea of Cortez, is gorgeous. That water was like mm -mm -mm on the skin. We love swimming. I like swimming in the morning, and we like swimming in the afternoon. It was always lovely. Outside of that, it's a party town. We are not party people, uh, unfortunately for us. <laughs> the music, the bass, the competing bass. Boom, boom, boom over here. Boom, boom, boom The over speakers here. were boom, huge boom, on boom. the beach. They were like six-foot speakers, blasting yeah. sound at the beach. Blasting sound. So right when it was not blasting, which is any time before 1 o'clock in the afternoon until about 1 o'clock in the evening, you could hear the ocean. We were that close. You could hear the waves. You could hear the ocean. It was so lovely. And then come one o'clock in the afternoon, come 11 o'clock at night, come one o'clock at night, competing bass. And I, if we partied, if we liked to be up late and that kind of, that boy, wouldn't that have been fun for us? We were trying, at one point, we were trying to shove towels up into the bathroom air vent because the sound coming through was so loud. It was vibrating the bathroom mirror. It was vibrating. We didn't, we were not prepared for that, but that's our own fault. Uh, not realizing what a party town it was. We had been there 20 years prior and it was not a party town, but that's makes me sound like an old person. I remember what. Have to be smashed to sleep, says Jim. We couldn't. Yeah. Uh, we had we our just ear wait. things in, and the thing would go boom, boom, yeah. boom. Yeah. Sometimes then, we'd hold hands, just wait for it to be over. At some point, they have to stop playing music. They can't play music all night. Well, I think the Mexican culture. They love it. It's it, party. It means good times. Good it times, means yeah. uh, letting go. You don't go it to the beach. You go working. to the beach and play music. That's what you do. Yeah. Whereas means, music, to me, it'll affect my eating. I can't eat mm -hmm. if the music is not digestively calm. I just can't. No, it was the only vacation I walked around with earplugs on in the daytime. I mean, <laughs> it was the only way to really relax in the daytime is not have that constant barrage into the ears, unless that's your thing. And I think for some people it was. Nobody, I, I asked I asked hundreds of people. Did did. I, not? I asked hundreds of people, do you, do you like the music? Are you enjoying the music? No one said yes. 
but there it is. We, we don't take the kids on those vacations, and we never did. No. We were together, and our first child was nine months old. And I saw... Also, we went to Cabo with a purpose. We went to Cabo because it was the first place we ever went on a date. Yeah. As a couple. Our kid was nine months old. And I said to Heidi, we got to get away for the kid, from the kid. We're going to go out on Friday night. We're going to get a babysitter. Oh, every Friday night. And we're going to yeah. drink, have fun, and not talk about no the child. No talking about the children. That was the one rule. Talk about anything. And it worked. Not the children. Did it not work? It worked. It totally works. Also, we made so many friends on that Friday night date. We would have the same waitress, and we watched at least three waitresses get married. Two of them have children. That was kind of nice, all just from drinking tequila on Friday Is Susanna night. here? Hi, Susanna. Yes, Hi, she Susanna. is. Hello. Thank you for coming. I'm, I'm. This is a test, Susanna. I'm trying to figure out. Oh, yeah. Research hotels more in depth. For sure, Jim. I mean, we now know. What matters to you on, on a vacation? Quiet. We we hadn't really thought of that. Quiet culture, matters culture. to Culture. I like town. You I'm love not town. a nature guy in the sense that I going am. for the top of a mountain in Colorado oh, sounds love like it. a dream. Just the animals and the air. I would love it. Not for you. I like culture. I want yeah. to hear people talk. So when we went out to eat, it was wonderful. Oh, you know, we used VRBO. Uh, That's shit. how we found it. You might have pneumonia. Oh, man, that stinks. Okay, well, if you have pneumonia, they have great drugs for that. They can probably know that. Help you get rid of that right away. But you've got to, yeah, got to get diagnosed. Got to get that figured out. And you got to breathe. Ooh, there's the trick to living. Breathe. <laughs> In, out. Yeah. Get well, Susanna. Agree completely. Yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah, the games today. Everybody's into it. Yeah. We're going to watch both games with a little separation. Mm -hmm. And I keep saying like beer and popcorn, but I don't like beer. Okay, we hate football. This is the part where it really gets us. Is we are not football people. And yet today we're watching both games yeah. because... What do we hate about football is important. Oh, we don't hate... a list. We have a, I have a list. A male. Male... I can start with cheerleaders. I am opposed to women going to a man's game to stand on the sidelines to cheer in a short skirt. I don't quite get that. I don't, I mean, if everybody wants to get on a short skirt and get out there and yell, that's one thing, but I don't quite understand that part. She blocked uh, the cheerleaders in her high school. I she, never She was the president happen. of the school yeah. and she blocked the cheerleaders. Mm. She was serious uh, about it. Let's see. I, we also, I always am feeling bad because it looks to me like future head trauma of America. When I'm watching football, I go, oh boy, that's not good. Oh boy, that guy's mother. What a torture this must be. Okay, I do feel that way. Um, but it is fun. They agree to that trauma. This is what I have to tell myself. They agree to that trauma. And um, there's another factor you're not saying. It's fun. You're a very aggressive. Oh, female. and I love the athleticism. She's, I she's do a love the Very aggressive herself. Truth. And she would hit other people who were dangerous to her. I kind of like Lucy. Yeah. And honestly, I love Mahomes. I can't even help it. I become one of those people. I think he is. Um, what? What? I know. I love how long he's been married to his wife. I love how he gives back to his community. I, there's a lot of things I just like about him, and. I would never have noticed him, but my cousin Kathy is from Kansas, and she forced me to watch a game. And once forced, I found myself dragged back to it every single time. And then Taylor Swift came on the scene, and I do love how upset grown men get at a woman at a game because I guess she's not wearing a short skirt and cheering. She's actually up in the stands, you know, acting like a grown up. That's probably, I love that. I love how upset they get over her. Uh, but anyway. We do love that. Part. I don't, uh, Lisa. I don't love Kelsey. Kelsey's got too much going for him. He's as tall as your son. He's taller than your son. He's Mr. He's Muscular. Got too much going All the for girls. Him. I don't like that. That's going. That's a male gone too far. You mean you wish he had more traumas, more troubles, more tribulations? I, and I also haven't heard him say a single meaningful statement uh -huh. about society. Mm -hmm. Mahomes has. Uh -huh. He said meaningful things beyond himself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Gets the girls to watch it does. Do you think uh, Kelsey's good looking? I don't. I, I'm the wrong person to ask. 
why I'm asking you. Because all I see is head trauma. So I think however cute he might be, in 10 years, he's not going to form a full sentence. And then he's not so cute, right? I mean, and I can't help it. I think that way. I think you cannot get smashed like that over and over. I played football concerts. one day because <laughs> yeah. you day. had to in high school. Oh, It was a requirement. Course. Football and wrestling were requirements back in my era. Mm -hmm. In football, one of my friends rammed into me and hit me and knocked me over. No, I said, good. this is the stupidest yeah. fucking sport. Ow. I'm not doing it. And I quit football. I played tennis. And I was pretty good. And I loved hitting it so hard that the other guy got knocked over. Oh, that's really That was so my good. aggression. Not as aggressive as you. I don't play tennis. No, but you're an aggressive athlete. Yeah. Mm. MMA? Nope. It's just... Oh, the MMA. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to watch. I can't. Okay. Yes. Did you tell the story about when you uh, were filming uh, the fight, the big fight, and you were the cameraman? Oh, this is so goddamn good. Jim, you're going to love this. This is so funny. Okay, tell that story because I love it so much. Oh, you want me to tell the story? Oh, yeah, yeah. You tell the story because it's so good. I thought you were going to tell the story. So I may have told the story before. I don't think so. It's the fight. It's Cassius Clay against. Who the hell's he against you? The other famous guy. And I'm the lead cameraman hired by the director. And I'm on this thing that goes up and down and goes maybe 20 Like the feet. cherry picker. Yeah, 20 feet from the stage. My job is to shoot tight shots because that's what each cameraman had a different role. And I shoot the first tight shot and Muhammad Ali gets smacked like this and the sweat bounces off and his head goes back. And I get really nauseous and he's over the fight in this I, cherry picker trying to get never, the tight shot and I he's like never seen fall somebody away. hit somebody oh, that's right frazier it was frazier yeah i think so right frazier and i'm not sure uh, like frazier or foreman but yeah i don't think it was George joe Trump. frazier mm -hmm. i think and anyway i get nauseous so i say mm -hmm. on the two-way radio to the director I'm, I'm i'm nauseous and about 15 minutes later, mm. I see a cup walking through the audience where the audience is, the cup coming towards me, and it's a Valium somebody got to give me a Valium because I'm the lead cameraman. I'd never seen anybody go like that and hit somebody. It's not for us, really. So MMA is... But I love reading about Rome and Greece and the battles they had. Well, that's how we feel about football, right? We feel they're a bit like gladiators, yeah. and we're like Romans going to the game. Oh, yeah. I read something recently about the wives um, of Heisman Trophy winners or some trophy winners, and they all get together. And the, all the wives, because they're so embarrassed of their husband's deterioration, and they're so, there's some shame that goes along with it. And they ended up shutting down that the women can't get together. They don't want even want anybody to talk about it. I think if you talk about what's going to happen and you know the risks, then it makes it a little easier. But Anyway, we don't have to keep talking about football. It's it's huh. just like politics a little bit. I I love <laughs> history. I, I love history, and as you can see from the channel, particularly the history of my own time, because I know a lot about it. You go back to like World War One. It's interesting to me because my grandfather fought in it, but it isn't like the sixties. Yeah, she is not interested in her the time of her youth. What is it? The eighties and the nineties. Yeah. It's just not that interesting there. It's, and it's, and I well, agree. until 9-11, nothing really happened. I mean, we did have one Gulf War, but that looked like Atari games on CNN. <laughs> you could, like, tune in. and I mean, I remember kids from my college having, you know, who had been called up, but I didn't know anybody who died. I didn't know anybody who got hurt. And you could literally watch TV and see the war was – it wasn't a hand-to-hand -hand combat kind of thing. So – I think Until 9-11, nothing really happened to my generation born in the 70s. Yeah, it's true. early 70s. I think my Vietnam posts are fascinating for the comments for how many people, father, grandfather, uncle, in some cases husband, husband mm -hmm. came home one year later totally different. It was never the same again. Broken, yeah. The military never dealt with that. I don't know if it does now either. Shocked me how many people wrote about it. I heart them. Because I'm glad they're sharing, because it's still painful. My father went, he was 19 years old, he came back at 20. Druggy and alcohol is the escape from what they saw and had to do. 
Well, my great grandfather was too young for World War One and too old for World War Two, and boy, does he regret that. And I don't know how many people still feel that way about the military, where they can't wait to serve and feel it's an honor. And I don't know that that feeling still exists. Do you? Some families. I think that have, I think that it, one of the comments that some people make on the channel is that young people don't have that kind of patriotism like yeah, my grandfather yeah. had. Yeah. That kind of patriotism had a negative and a positive for sure. Yeah. But you certainly tied the country together. Uh, is it important to teach our kids love of our country? I don't know if it's important to teach kids love of country, but it's certainly important to teach them constitution, civics. I mean, I think that stuff really does matter. We, do, we talk I, about it at yeah, home. I think civics uh, lessons are so I, I come from an immigrant mother. Um, we discuss, they don't get it in school, which a lot of the right-wing people writing on my channel comment on. School has failed civics. Uh-huh. Values, yeah, values, yeah, values. Yeah, 100%. Agreed. Wait, I just hit the table. Values, Sorry. yeah. Um, I taught my son's values. I'm you not did. saying you didn't, but no, I did. No, you did. I agree. I was really strong on, that's just wrong. That's the right thing to do. For a male, I believe, doing the right thing may be the most important thing of all. Doing the right thing by the people you care about, doing the right thing by the country, by the community, by the poor homeless guy or woman you see on the street. Well, so we thought it was critical to teach our children how to think, not what to think. They think whatever they want to think. But to teach a child how to think, how to think critically, how to think scientifically. Yeah. I loved how, it when my children think. disagreed with me. Oh, yeah. Vehemently. Vehemently. It was good. Yeah. But I want to hear the logic. I want to hear the thinking. Yeah, I got clobbered on this recent post that has Donald Trump in it. Well, and I feel badly about that because they had some point, I wrote something carelessly that Trump, some of the people oh. who supported George Wallace are the kind of people who support Donald Trump. They thought that was unfair. I feel bad about that. Well, what made you say that? What George Wallace had said? I was trying, trying to, to find comparisons oh. between George Wallace and Trump worth considering. Mm -hmm. That was my thing, worth considering. Forgetting that the Trump people feel that the Democrats attack unfairly him on racism. Ladybugs. Oh. How do you save the ladybug in the water? Right? All the time. Ladybugs and bees, I save them. They're dying, floating in the water. They get uh, well. I found out they get caught in an air current, and then they whoosh, they get dumped right into the Pacific. And if they cross my path, I swim with one arm above oh. me. And I've actually seen, which is fascinating, a ladybug can kind of turn itself inside out and to dry off. So I've watched that whole process. I don't know, makes it worth saving them. Yeah, plus, you actually tell it to me. You plus, know. imagine what I must look like in the Pacific. I must look like a little insect myself, and hopefully somebody would do that for me someday. So <laughs> karma, I save them. Plus, I love bees because I have a friend who um, makes honey. And I hadn't really thought about bees until I talked to him one day about his honey making. And now I can't not think about them and how important they are. So I'm always saving a little bee who gets strung out into the Pacific. What a scary place if you're an insect. It's a scary place as a human. So can you imagine when you have wings and you're wet, how awful it must be? Ladybugs are supposed to be good luck. Yeah, I hope so. I've, I've saved many of them. I don't believe in luck. Bye, bug. I just don't believe in luck. Everything seems to be like, I can't change it, or... I can change it by my attitude. I can change many things by my attitude, although not some things. And those are the ones I have to accept. Sometimes Jim has so many, he has to suck them off his window with a shop back. That's good. <laughs> really? It's also really good if you have them. I oh. think they eat aphids or they eat some other little, uh, they're great to have in the garden because they eat the stuff that eats your stuff. Well, I got nothing to say right now. I probably do, but I need to be provoked by you guys. And you got to tell me now or after you've considered it, does this work? 
And what could we do better? I really. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. What could I? How can I improve it? Should I make it more salacious? She won't. She won't do that. Well, I could. No. I could try, but I'll probably <laughs> fail. But I could try. I'll fail. <laughs> I mean, I think about it. I just shut it down. <laughs> There's just so much more to us than the salaciousness. Yeah, in our age, which people find strange because, well, it is strange, but not to us. Yeah. And anyway, how can you help it that you're so old? I couldn't fucking help it. I mean, if we could turn you back, we yeah, would. I, didn't. I think the thing I heard most when we were first sort of, well, what would you all have in common to talk about? I'm like, I don't know. History happens at the exact same moment for both of us. We have so much to talk about. And then I used to say stupid shit like, what do you mean, like the Beatles? or? I mean, like Joan Baez, because I didn't live. I don't. Yeah. Anyway, we have plenty to talk about. And Jim Belushi, she does not like Bob Dylan, the Beatles. Well, lo doesn't like. I don't find them as sacred as you do. Yeah. Let's just say it's the wrong. That, in that way, it's the Bob, wrong generation. Bob Dylan, how could you not of any generation find him? You just have to get over the yee, yee, yee part. <laughs> That's the part. I go, I don't Did he say something or is he choking? What's happening? Thank you, Lisa. We're hilarious. We do talk this way all the time. This is not uncommon. This is our daily speech, our constant speech. Yeah. I need it. I can't thrive. I, I thrive on it. I'm very much me. Mm -hmm. I don't feel edited by her. No. Except if I talk salacious. Um, Only if there are other people around. I mean, privately, true. it's a whole different story. True, true. Yeah. That's funny, Jim, going yeah. electric. Well, he went electric one long time ago. We heard Bob Dylan and Paul Simon one time in a concert together. Yep. They had both seen better days. But they had great backup people. And Paul Simon is my – Paul Simon and James Taylor are my two favorite of all time. Paul Simon's writing is multi-generational. For sure. For sure. And Dylan was a real poet to me. Of the time. Cindy says, Bob Dylan and the Beatles, yuck. Oh, Probably. well, Cindy, you see, we could listen to the same music. That would <laughs> be – She feels like you do. No, and people do love them both. People love them. People I would pay, love them. I would pay any good money for that a ticket to a Rolling Stones concert coming up this year. Oh, you can get one. You know, you can get one. I'm only it did going, not sell I'm out. I'm only going with you, I told oh. you. And you don't like the world. You don't love the Rolling Stones. You don't understand how uniquely creative they are. Okay, I'll tell you one thing these bands have done for us. They have shown us drugs ain't bad. You heard your whole life in the education system that drugs will do you, but you look at them and you go, I don't know. I think what it really does is like allow you to live a really long time and maintain activity. Uh, that's what it looks like, you know, from the outside watching these guys. Now your Aerosmith on. generation. Yes. <clears throat> no Aerosmith. Yeah. They're still alive too. Again. Do you like them? Seems like drugs does you a good turn. <laughs> gets you through into your eighties at least. Yeah. Funny. Does anybody on this thing notice I use a skin cream? Oh, that's so great. I didn't notice. You didn't notice. That's... I didn't know. Yeah, it has a certain... What happens with your skin cream? What'd you get new? A little bit of luster, glisten, a little bit less of a spot. Right and... there. I see it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a little less. I agree. There. Yeah. Used nice. to be more. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should do your eyelashes. Look at your eyelashes and the thing. Just look. They're not good. Yeah. Maybe use a little defining. I don't want to interfere on my lash. Because when you close your eyes, doesn't it stick to the lower lash? Oh, when your eyelids start to droop? No, when your eye stuff on them. Doesn't that stick to the lower? Do you think your eyebrow is going to go down to your eye? No, but it's definitely different. Mm -hmm. I like my voice. I like the kind of horse. You mean you wouldn't use like eyeliner? No, you probably no. wouldn't. That would go. Yeah. The stones, right. Uh-huh. Going to a Stones concert, the one yeah, I went to Jagger in New Jagger York Jagger. City. New York City, Black Knight. Place is noisy as hell. They're blowing off firecrackers. Incredible. All of a sudden, the drum starts. And this gigantic, like looking like a gigantic tree cutting device comes up in front of the audience. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, and it the opens Rolling like Stone that. Concert? And there's Mick Jagger standing on this thing. Singing to us, oh my God, skincare for men is trending. 
Yeah, you got, what did you buy for your face? Uh, what I bought is a little container this big that cost fucking $200. Oh my gosh. It said, especially for men, especially oh, for Oh, they aging. got you, they got you. I, I said, that's oh, for me. Oh boy, you got suckers. It's, it's a Facebook. Mm -hmm. What was my first concert? It was, um, who was the people your mother liked? It was a group. Oh, Peter, Paul, and Mary. Peter, Paul, and Mary. And it was Pete Seeger in 1957 oh, in nice. Carnegie Hall. My parents took me to hear Pete Seeger because he was. My first concert was Sha Na Na. Sha Na Na. And they played other people's music. You went? I, did. I got taken, yeah. Oh, my first concert actually was Dolly Parton at the Grand Old Opry. I was 13. Oh, my God. Then I saw Sha Na Na at like 15 at some. Oh, my God. Her my grandmother took her all the way down to, to uh, Tennessee. Yep. For the Grand, Grand Old Opry. In a bus. Wonderful. With old people. See, that's how it started, babe. Yeah. My bus trip. We both like country music. Yeah. Love Having Dolly. Heidi here is like a Sunday with cherries on the top. Oh. That's beautiful, Cindy. Oh. Thank you for that. Mary be all. Mm -hmm. Mary. I'll be Mary today. May take a little tequila. Mm -hmm. Mary, tequila does actually make me merry. What does it make you? Good question. A little dizzy. No, Loopy. it makes me. Some of the edge of the chatter in my brain stops. Mm. Oh, that's nice. You, you, you also stop. <clears <clears <throat> I think mental illness you, drugs you, do that too, right? I, I think people do that <laughs> for that you, reason. You also stop the chatter in my brain. Uh, you mean when we're together? Yeah. Talking. When when I'm around Heidi, mm. the chatter goes way down. Because I'm really listening to her chatter, which I love. And she got all kinds of chatter. And she could talk for hours on a live stream on chat. Just the thing with her friends, her, her weightlifting friends, her hair cutter, her skin person, right. her massage guy. The list goes on and on. And, and yeah. I hear every one of those stories. And I'm fascinated. And I don't have any chatter. It's true. Oh, that's nice. That's very nice. Okay. I thank you all. I thank you too for doing this. Oh, even though you didn't you're welcome. Mean to. It's not easy to be talking to that and reading this. No, and this side by side, not seeing each other and then keeping your eyes up and also just the performing nature of it. Performing nature. Mm -hmm. It Ray, worked for us. Yeah, it was good. Joy We'd do be better the fishes in the deep blue sea. Oh, yeah, yeah the fishes have got hooked today. Isn't that Peter, Paul, and Mary? Didn't they sing that? Yeah. Take a selfie. I don't know how to do that. We really right, let stick. See. Let's see if we can do let it. Let me mm. see. Hold on now. Oh, with the. Uh, mm. I'll go there. Nope. Oh, in your mouth. Maybe stick your tongue out. That'll be a good photo. Uh, I can't do it. I don't know mm. how to do a selfie. Oh, Boy, we are really bad at well, this. We're bad with your phone. No, that won't work. Because mm. then I'm not. Then my phone's in the picture. Okay, hold on. Um, Let's try this. Oh, this is really a raise lot my happening eyes. at once. Look at the camera. Okay. Anything Yeah, happened? we did it. Mm. Thank you. Joy to you and me, right? Three dog night. Oh, three dog night. Leaving on a jet plane. Oh, Jesus like Christ. To be doing at that, that moment when she was writing that, going on a jet plane to another country was like fantastic. That's so beautiful. Mm. Cabo and tequila. <laughs> You're funny, Lisa. All right, guys. David Hoffman, Heidi Hoffman. Signing out. Have a good Sunday.